Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Easton. I'm Pastor Stephanie, and I see the sun is shining. This is the day the Lord has made. Thanks be to God. Um, it's wonderful to have you here. I uh, have a few announcements to make. Um, if you are somebody who has asked for envelopes, giving envelopes this year, they are over here by the um, um, donation box. There's not many, not everyone has wanted one, but they are there. If you are looking for where, where they are, that's where they are. So please know that. Please know that our annual meeting is coming up. If you are a member um, of the congregation, this is an important meeting for you to be at. If you are a friend of the church, you are welcome to come. You simply um, do not have a vote, but you are welcome to join us and see what the church is doing. Um, it is an important meeting as we look at budget issues. Nothing we all enjoy doing, but something that is really important for us to do together. Um, a couple of reminders, our mission, um, oh, let's see, our session is meeting on Tuesday the 17th, mission is meeting January 25th, and worship team is meeting January 29th. If you have not been somebody who has signed up to do the blessing box, we really are trying to expand the number of folks who support the blessing box. Thank you if you have done that. Thank you if you have donated to be a part of that. The blessing box is our little mini pantry outside, and we continue to just be amazed at how many folks are blessed by the blessing box. Um, so please, if you can support that, consider. The sign-up sheets are um, by this door, by our offices. Um, you can sign up for a week. That would be greatly helpful. If you're somebody online, you can call our office, and we're glad to sign you up there. Our wonderful choirs are rehearsing again. Um, I am so thankful that the choirs have, um, have practiced our last hymn today. Today, um, in honor of Martin Luther King weekend, um, our last hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's a beautiful hymn, but it, it's a little unusual in its syncopation. Um, so sing along, use your hymnal, and uh, sing with your heart. If you're someone like me, um, only God is pleased with the, the music that comes from you, but that's all that counts. So um, I will mention that. And um, thank you uh, for, for all being here. Uh, we are now closing the parking lot door at 1030, just trying to add a little safety measure so that um, if somebody comes in, we can see them from this door. And uh, at this point, when the bells ring, that's the signal that the door is gonna be closed. And if you come, you'll just have to walk around um, to our spring garden sanctuary door. Um, and hopefully the, uh, uh, the doorstop will not be down and you can come on in. So um, we really want everyone to feel welcome. Those are my announcements. Um, are there any other announcements that I have neglected for this morning? Hearing none, then I do invite us to turn all that we are, heart, mind, spirit, to worshiping God. And if you will help me, as together we hear God's call by speaking the words in bold in the call to worship. Listen to God's call to God's people today. We were once people who dwelled in darkness, but God gave us light to guide us, Jesus Christ. God blessed us and adopted us as beloved children through the sacrament of baptism. The water of baptism is a symbol of spiritual nourishment and cleansing. This is the day of remembrance of Jesus' baptism. As we remember his baptism, let us be reminded of our own adoption by God. Let us celebrate the joyous connection we have to our loving God. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Please be seated. Good friends, we begin our worship with a prayer of confession. We do this together because we know that we all fall short of being the people who God intended us to be, each and every one of us. And so this morning we speak together and then in quiet, in silent prayer, we speak personally to God all along trusting in God's mercy and grace, in God's goodness and offer of forgiveness. So will you join your voices with mine as we unburden ourselves and come before our gracious God. Oh God, we humans are incredibly stubborn. We have just celebrated the season in which we say your light has been given to the world, and yet we have forgotten already the spirit of giving, togetherness, and joy. Already it is so easy to be petty, divisive, and complacent. Help us to think beyond our own bubbles of self-interest. Help us to yearn for your presence. Pour your baptismal waters over us again cleansing us, wash away our jealousy, greed, and all negative thoughts and behaviors that stand in the way of our truly being the people you have called us to be. Again, let us receive the blessing offered in the birth and baptism of Jesus and in all the goodness of this creation. Amen. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, there is always good news. Hear the good news of forgiveness. The love of God is always offered to us, freely, joyfully, forever and always. Rejoice, dear friends, this is the good news of our Lord. Amen.
first reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and in light, alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may your word settle within us. May your words speak to our hearts and our lives and guide us. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. So do you consider yourself an enlightened person? I won't do a show of hands. <laughs> When I think of the word enlightened, I do think specifically of the historic period of enlightenment, the age of enlightenment. Philosophers of the 17th and 18th century had this startling idea. It's not so startling to us. But they really believed that human beings could use reason. I could also take a show of hands if you still believe that these days. The thought was that we could, we human beings could think for ourselves beyond what priests or princes or those in power told us. We could know and understand the world through rational and logical thought and discovery. We take this idea for granted because of the age of enlightenment. 
Now, when I use the term enlightened, I don't know what it conjures for you, but I think of a person who can think through complexity. Now, I'm not just talking about someone being smart or educated. Those are good things. Someone enlightened, in my mind, is somebody who's curious. You know those curious people who always seem to want to learn a little bit more, who are willing to kind of look outside of the box of their own experience, who want to continue to grow. The other thing I think about enlightened people is that they're, they're wise. You've all met somebody who knows a lot and who maybe lets you know that they know a lot. But you wouldn't necessarily say they are wise. What is somebody that is wise? What is wisdom all about? Wisdom relates to perspective, sound judgment. It's not so much about what you know, though it helps if you're knowledgeable. It's about how you use and apply what you know. I think enlightened people are wise. So wise, open-minded, thinking things through. You know what enlightened people, I think, say? Something we don't always, we don't always catch everybody saying. They say things like, um, I don't know the answer. I think that's an enlightened thing to say. I think enlightened people say things like, um, I'm sorry. I think I got that wrong. The other thing I think enlightened people do in terms of like what, what a concrete looks like, I think enlightened people listen. Have you ever been having a conversation with somebody and you're, you're pretty sure they are not listening to you? They are already like two or three sentences ahead, ready to make their own already formulated thought? So at least by my definition, do you consider yourself enlightened? Think about that word, enlightened. The reason I think it came to me is because right in that center of the word is the root light. Today I want you to think about enlightenment because I want you to think about light. Metaphorically, there's tons of places in scripture where we talk about light. The light of God. Psalm 119, you know what that is? The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 139, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even you, God, darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day. For darkness is a light to you. God as light. So what happens when you physically shine a light on something? Right? Um, you make it visible. When uh, years ago when we had confirmation class and we had, um, we, we, we did kind of like a hide and seek sort of game in the building, we had the lights out because you couldn't see. Light shows us our way, shows us a path. Light is guidance and safety and clarity. Light is also life-giving. You can have the good black earth with seeds in it. You can have water in that good black earth. But light that shines on it helps bring forth the seed. Light is life. Light is also truth. If we have a cartoon, and we're going to show that I had an idea, what do we show over our heads? A light bulb going off. Light as revelation, as thought, as understanding. We shed light, and we see and we understand more. So this morning, think about light. John 8, 12 proclaims, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light 
of life. We people of faith, we name the source of what enlightens us. And it's interesting because when I think of enlightened, I think of, of course, the, the brightness, but also of a lightness of being. The light that gives us energy and light and clarity and guidance. We name that as God. Keep that symbolism of light in mind as we think about our two scriptures today. We heard from Matthew of the baptism of Jesus. John, the Baptist, has been in the wilderness and calling people to the waters with words of repentance. He wants people to change for good. Tells them to repent. And then comes along Jesus, and John is like, oh no, I'm not baptizing you. He recognizes Jesus as something special, someone special. He says, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus says, no, this is the way it should be. You should baptize me. And Jesus is baptized. And in this case, the baptism is about identity. Because what happens? Jesus goes into the waters. This is our baptismal font. I recently saw on a clergy uh, group that I'm in, somebody was asking because they wanted to do a full immersion baptism. They were looking for like blow up pools that they could bring into their sanctuary so they could do a full immersion baptism. We, we just have this. Jesus went into the waters and when Jesus came out of the waters, what happened? The sky opened up. And it was as if there was a visual sign of God's spirit blessing Jesus. God claims Jesus. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. God names Jesus. God says Jesus is important and unique and has a purpose. In the description of Jesus being baptized, the heavens open up and he sees the spirit and everyone sees the spirit of God descending like a dove. And then Matthew, all of the gospel writers describe it in different ways. In Matthew, the word is the dove as if the dove is alighting on him. And there I see that word again. I see and hear, hear the light reference. Jesus is a glow with the Spirit of God. In that moment, we know that he is sent to us to be our light. That's what that moment is about. It's about identity. It's about naming who Jesus is. Now, we Christians have had a long history of putting that text in conversation with another text that you heard today, Isaiah 42. And again, pay attention. There's more references to light. Isaiah 42 begins with a reference to the servant of God. Here is my servant upon whom... Uh, wait a minute. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, says God. D do you hear the echoes with the Matthew passage? This is my beloved with whom I am well pleased. They connect, and it is likely that the writer of Matthew was recalling this Isaiah passage. Do you see why we remember Isaiah's words at this moment? Remembering God's spirit floating and flooding down on Jesus. Isaiah 42 is one of several passages from Isaiah that we call the song of the suffering servant. Because then 
the scripture launches into this almost poetic, and so we call it a song, proclamation. Isaiah introduces us to the servant of the Lord, the servant of God who is chosen, supported by, working for God's purposes. And Isaiah 42 tells us the servant will not grow faint or be crushed until... Did you catch what? Until he has established justice on the earth. Chosen, sent, uphold, upheld by God to heal, to restore, to bring about justice. This is the purpose, the redeeming purpose of the servant. And the servant goes on to sing and, and speaks from the perspective of the Lord, saying, I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you the servant, and now we are told who the servant is. I have given you as a covenant, as a promise to my people, and as a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. This servant is God's light. Did you hear that? Were you paying attention to what the light does? It brings about justice, restoration, wholeness to all of creation. Into darkness, into unseeing, into the imprisoned, light, light. It's poetic language, it's metaphor, it's symbolism, but we can all relate to it. All these decades and years and years later, we might switch on a light bulb, but it still does the same thing. Light makes sense to us, I hope it does, to you. To help us understand that God offers us guidance. For those of us who sometimes struggle to make heads and tails of truth, truth that is spun, truth that is hidden behind conspiracy theories or lies or just plain ignorance, light, God offers us a way to see and know. God faithfully provides freedom to those who have been shackled by injustice, isolated and alone, all through God's light. Today's passages from scripture invite us, invite you and I, to step into the light, to embrace more light in our lives, to seek more light, to embrace the goodness of God in our lives in real and concrete ways. Now this is where I take a survey. We've just ended Christmas. Our wonderful folks came and a lot of our Christmas decorations are gone. A lot of our, our lights are, we always have candles. How many of you still have Christmas lights at home up and out? How many of you will leave Chris, your Christmas tree up until February? No judgment. I'm not judging. If you leave it up to St. Patrick's Day, that's fine. At Christmas, we have all these symbols of light around us because Jesus is the light of the world. That's what it's supposed to remind us, that God is guiding us, giving us new perspective, calling us to the truth, and to justice. So even if we put lights away, we should remember that Jesus is the light of the world. What does it mean to embrace the light? It means you and I, who want the light of Christ, we who follow Jesus should ask ourselves the questions that Jesus asked us to ask. 
the two commandments. We should ask ourselves, am I loving my neighbor as Jesus commanded? To have light is to love one's neighbor. To look at ourselves as God's light shines in us, we have to be honest about how we're doing with that. We have human clouded perceptions. We don't honor creation in all its beautiful glory. That's one kind of way of looking at the world differently if we have light. And we prejudge others. We prejudge others based on our fear, our ignorance. Maybe we want to remain blissfully ignorant. That's a kind of darkness. That's a kind of shadow. Maybe we say we're too tired, too set in our ways to think about the world or our neighbors in different ways. But God calls us into the light to be enlightened. So let God's light shine. Be enlightened. Look at your neighbor through the light of Christ with love. And then remember the whole debate about who is your neighbor. It's the people around us. Look, these are your neighbors. The people right outside our door are our neighbors. The folks who use the blessing box are our neighbors. Love your neighbor and embrace the light. The next question that Jesus has us ask is, do we love God with all our heart and soul and mind? If we let the light of Jesus into our hearts, we might be moved to see ourselves differently. We might be reminded to love ourselves as, creator, as created in the image of God. But we also should reflect on ourselves and ask, what are we really worshiping in our life? Who have we made the center of our life? Are we worshiping God? What are we feeding off in our life? Are you feeding off negative news, gossip, sensationalism? That's opposite to the light of Christ. With whom are you spending your time? What are you spending your time doing? That's an indication of what you're worshiping. We can shed light on where our true worship is if we think about that. What do you fill your days with? Is it life-giving light or something else? We need to let our light shine in all that we do and reorient ourselves to the light. And I don't know about you, but this time of year, when the day feels so short, I'm longing for more light. I'm longing for the energy that it gives, for the perspective that it gives. I don't feel like thinking of new things in the darkness. But the light is inspiration. We want to shine more brightly as we focus on the light of God. I hope you're singing in your head, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Or maybe now you are because I just said that. On this day when we remember Jesus' baptism, I just want to remind you that baptism is about our commitment to living in the light of Christ. Because Jesus so perfectly reflects the light of God. In our church, we baptize with water and with the words in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In our church tradition, you only need to be baptized once. A baptism can't, like, not take hold. You don't need any do-overs. You only need one baptism but we can remember our baptism, and we'll do that today. We can remember how we've been adopted by God and recommit ourselves to living in the light of Christ. Every day is a new opportunity to embrace the light 
of the world. This Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a holy day set aside for us to remember the work of seeking justice. That's what the Isaiah passage said that the servant of Christ was sent, the servant of God was sent to do. I hope that you will not let Monday be just another day. I hope you'll do something. Perhaps read something. Educate yourself about racism today. Maybe you might engage in some sort of community service that shines more of God's light in the world. So enlighten yourself or share God's light in the world. That's how we can honor that day. But friends, today I just want to invite you to embrace the light, to be more enlightened, to let God's light shine in you, to shine with the love and the light of God, for you are God's beloved children, made for the light. This is good news. Thanks be to God.
hear these words of invitation to offering. Beloved children of God, we, too often we see the world through a lens of scarcity. We look at all the things we do, do not have, or wish for something bigger and better. And yet our stories of faith tell us that the smallest of things often become enormous when placed in God's hand. And so you are invited to bring your little and watch what God can do, what great things to bless this entire community. So please leave an offering um, in the box at the front of the sanctuary. We have it over there. Or make your gifts to support the ministry and mission of this church online or through the mail. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we offer our gifts with humble hearts, knowing the need in our world is great and our gifts alone will not be enough. But we offer our gifts in hope that you will bless them, multiply them, and use them to help fulfill your purpose revealed in Jesus Christ, Savior of us all. Amen. This morning, I would like to offer our prayers from the baptismal font. If you have been baptized in water, in the words, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I invite you to remember your baptism. If you have not been baptized, I invite you to know that the love of God for you is beyond measure. Let us pray together. Lord, you are the mighty one. You created light, and you send your light around the world. You sent your son, your beloved, into the world of darkness as the true light, a light that brings hope to all. And yet, Lord, we recognize that sometimes we want to capture your light like it's a firefly, and we want to keep it all to ourselves so that we can have the good feelings and experience of your light. And yet at the same time, there are those who would reject your light, who try to find any way imaginable to cover the goodness of your light. Oh, but God, you hold us to be the light of the world. You call us to share your light, and to let your light shine. And so today, as we pray, we want to let our light shine. We pray that our light will shine so that others, whose light may have grown dim, or has almost gone out, or yes, are even living in darkness, that we might reflect your light to them. Oh Lord, today as we pray, we want to shine with the light of hope to those who are discouraged, dejected, despondent, and disappointed. Oh Lord, today as we pray, we want to shine your light of love to those who are our enemies, to those who are hated, who are bullies, as well as to those who are abused and bullied and disenfranchised. We want your light to shine. 
We want to shine with your light of grace to those who have given up, who don't believe that you, God, love them. Lord, we want your light to shine for those who don't feel wanted, for those who are lonely and in need. Oh, Lord, we want to shine with your light of faith. We want to be your hands and feet, your light for this world, for those who are hungry, both in body and in spirit, for those who struggle, both in body and in spirit. Lord, let your light shine and call upon us to act our faith, act out in our faith, that your light might shine in concrete ways. O Holy One, we pray for all the people connected to this church community who are struggling with illness or grief and loss, that your light, your warmth, your strength might shine strongly in them. Lord, we pray that we, as your church, might carry your light into this world for all to see what a glorious and wonderful and loving God you are. Lord, let your light shine. Amen. Friends, as we pray that our light will shine, I invite you to remember your baptism. In the waters of creation, God made this beautiful world, and the Spirit of God spilled over the waters. The waters of this world nourish us, cleanse us. In the waters of baptism, we saw Jesus and recognized that he was your beloved son. Remember your baptism. Know that you are claimed and loved by God. Alleluia. Amen. If you would like, at the end of service, you are welcome to come forward and touch the waters and remember your baptism. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
beloved. We pray, God, we know that we have come over a way with the tears that have watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered, out of the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our star is cast. And we see you, O Holy One, at work, still creating a just world for all. We leave empowered, enlightened, by the fresh winds of change and the dream that is before us, to be the God's hands and feet and heart in this world today, tomorrow and forever. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, go in peace, knowing that you are loved. Amen. Alleluia. Mm -hmm.